And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here, Lucas from Mars, back with another episode of this Emilio Show 22 Custom League. And today we continue finishing up with opening day here in this video. And in this game here between Las Vegas and Colorado, as we get to look at some of the new faces on both of these bowl clubs here. And for the gamblers and their pitching staff, we do have a couple of new players on this pitching staff. Their ace is still the same, Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns coming off of a Cy Young Award last year for his in incredible season that he had. 230 innings last year, only allowed 58 runs, finished with a 2.3 or 2.27 ERA, had 211 strikeouts, a 1.04 whip. So he's one of the best pitchers in baseball, the ace of this staff, and looking to repeat as the Cy Young winner here in this season. And this team got James Paxton. They signed him from the Houston Reapers in the offseason. James Paxton last year pitched almost 200 innings, had a below 4 ERA and a 1.33 whip, and he had some good postseason outings as well. He was very effective for the Reapers in the playoffs. So he looks to improve this pitching staff here. And then Mike fulton -Evich, Played for Las Vegas last year a little bit, and he was actually fairly good for Las Vegas last year in 187 innings. He still has three years left on his contract, only 71 overall. And then Simeon Woods Richardson, who pitched a little bit last year, had 52 innings last season, had a 5.02 ERA and a 1.5 whip. So his numbers last year weren't like incredible or anything. And I don't know if he's—I don't think he's a rookie technically going into this year because he pitched over 50 innings. I don't think he is. I don't think he qualifies as a rookie anymore. But he's that number five starter for Las Vegas here. And then you got Robert G Gesellman, who, you know, under 24 innings last year, had a really good season last year, and had a 3.42 ERA with a 1.1 and a 1.15 whip. Jojo Romero there as that second long reliever. Andres Munoz, one of the younger, really, really good relief pitchers in baseball. His walk per nine rate is not very good, but he had a 3.18 uh, ERA last season. I mean, 36 walk per nine is not great, but every other stat for him is really good. Rowan Wick, 77 overall, pitched 40 plus innings last year, was good. Phil Maton, 45 innings and under four or under three ERA for him last season. Kyle Cody as well as 69 overall, so we'll see how good he does. And Caleb Theobar, I mean, only gave up eight runs and 37 innings in last season. And then Chad Green is their only offseason addition to this bullpen, I believe. And, you know, one of the best closers in the league. Has really, really good stats all across the board. And, you know, 42 innings pitched last year, 38 saves. Only had a 2.32 ERA only of 11 runs all season. So, yeah, one of the best guys out there for relief pitching and three years, $7.2 million for him. So I think the pitching for this Las Vegas team is actually not that bad, not pretty, not not terrible. I think their offense is going to be where they may struggle this season. Yeah, Sonny Marte last year was just decent. Didn't have a lot of power last year. The average was okay. I think he had a below 700 OPS. And then you got Tommy Edmond there and batting second. He was not very good last year. And then Framo Reyes is they're probably the best overall hitter on this team, batting in the number three spot. And then you have Jorge Soler, who had a lot of, I mean, led this team in home runs. Last year, I don't know how many he had exactly, but uh, he's that number four guy. He's their power bat. And he's a guy that I think I could see trading in this during the course of this regular season for this team. Because, you know, they were rebuilding last year. They're probably going to be re rebuilding again. So look for some guys that this team can maybe use as trade assets going into this season. Brian Rocchio, a 72 overall, 22-year-old there. And, you know, he's got some good hitting stats. He did play last year a little bit. And then you got Harry Ford, who's making his debut as this team's catcher. And he has good catching ratings, 68, 77, 76, 73, and 76. Good contact ratings at 59 and 53. Uh, good vision and discipline at 51 and 54. 39 and 47 power. So I like his. I like where his bat is at, and I think his defense is pretty darn good as well. So 
You know, he's a 75 overall B potential player. I think he's ready for the majors. So he's making his major league debut in this episode. And then Carlos Santana, they got him from OKC last year. He was uh, kind of more of a utility guy for the Bison. And, you know, he had 40 walks or 46 strikeouts. So he actually had a 350 on base percentage, which is pretty good. He was actually not too bad at all for OKC a year ago. But, you know, he's 36 years old at the end of his career. But he is there at the number nine spot in this batting order. So, yeah, the batting order is not nearly as good. The hitting is not nearly as good on this team. That's for sure. But uh, I do think that their pitching is still fairly, fairly good. Well, who was a Devers there? I mean, no power on him. And still probably some years away from the majors. Not sure how many years away from the majors he is. But, you know, this farm system, honestly, could be a lot better. It's really not that impressive. I mean, at least in AAA, there's not a lot of guys here at AAA that this team has to look forward to. You go to AA, and Luis Matos is here. He's probably the best AA prospect that's on that AA team right now. 51 and 53 contact ratings, 40, I mean, pretty decent power, good vision. His defense isn't great right now, um, and his discipline is only uh, at 39, but Luis Mantos, a potential, 21 years old. He has some uh, potential. They're probably their best, one of their better prospects that they got on this team right now. And then on their bench here, well, Olivas Martinez is, you know, going to be put in that string lineup. He's another a potential prospect that they have at 21 years old. And I didn't realize this until about uh, almost a couple months into the year. They do have some other pretty top prospects and good prospects from the last draft that they that we just had last year that were sitting in single A that I didn't actually call up to double A. Uh, Benito Venezuela is one of those guys that they drafted last year, but they have a couple of other offensive players that you know they drafted last year that weren't on that double A team at the start of the year. So their farm system is actually better than you know I'm giving you here in this episode. But Benito Venezuela, amazing K crown at 79. Every other stat is fairly underdeveloped for him right now, but he has a potential, 16 overall in 21 years of age, and he has a lot of stamina too, so 95 there with that stat. So yeah, you know, he doesn't throw a lot, he doesn't throw fast at all, but, you know, he's got good movement, I guess, on his pitches, and he still gets a lot of strikeouts, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do this year. And then Jordan Wicks, don't know what his B potential is exactly, 23 years old, he is a 67 overall, so he's got at least some potential. Jesus Lopez has high B potential, probably 88 or 89. And he's right now 64 overall. He's already 23 years old, though. So his age is kind of a problem. He does a lot, a lot of home runs at home run per nine, sitting at only 28. 66 and 60 um, walk and hit per nine is pretty good numbers for him. But, yeah, that's the farm system for Las Vegas. It's okay. You know, they, they got some... Decent prospects there, but it probably could be a little bit better. And so we'll see. That's why I really think that they are going to be looking as a seller at the deadline this year. So for the Rattlers here, you had you know Lance McCullers Jr. there as their ace. He's still going to be the ace on this team. But they traded for Chris Sale. Traded Grayson Rodriguez to get him. And last year for... Chris Sale, you know, a 4.09 ERA and a 1.36 whip. So it wasn't the best season for him. He didn't have, have over 200 strikeouts last year. And, you know, over, in two years left on that contract. So he's going to be on this team until he's 36 at least. But, yeah, I think this is a good addition to this pitching staff that really improves it because, you know, this pitching staff last year was, you know, probably one of the weaker points on this team. But that's a big improvement, hopefully, for you there. And, you know, obviously, we know what, what Chris Sale has done previously in his career. He's a good career pitcher there. And then Luis Pacino pitched 27 innings last year. And this will be his first kind of full year as a starter there. Matt Manning and Blake Snell are also on that uh, pitching staff. Now, in the bullpen, Nick Vincent was also a part of that. Grayson Rodriguez deal coming over from Portland and, you know, 82.2 innings last year, had an under 3 ERA, so we had a good season a year ago. And then they got Darren O'Day from Charlotte. Darren O'Day, last year, he's 40 years old, so 
at the end of his career, but 39.2 innings last year with 4.08 ERA, 1.08 whip. I mean, the whip is pretty low for Darren O'Day last season, so see how he, he does this year. Then Brett Anderson, he's still here after last year. Will Smith, as well as now this team's setup guy, and he was last year. He had 35 holds a year ago with a 3.09 the yeah, RA and then Jordan Romano remains this team's closer here. 97 hit per nine, 82 K per nine. I mean, he is a really good pitcher. 99 velocity, throws 98 and, you know, almost 100. And he was really good as this team's closer last year. So, you know, I think the pitching is going to be probably a lot better than it was a year ago for this team. They are third ranked, apparently, according to this, according to this game this season. And, you know, I think their pitching definitely improved going into this season. And this offense, you know, I think this offense has a lot of potential to be really, really good here. You got Josh Rojas leading off, and you got Mookie Betts. But remember that Mookie Betts and Carlos Correa, both of those guys. Well, Carlos Correa got hurt in part way through the season, and Mookie Betts just had a kind of a down year last year compared to his standards. And so, you know, a full season with Mookie Betts and uh, Carlos Correa would be really, you know, full healthy season with both, both of those guys potentially could be really good for this offense. And then you have Brian Reynolds, who had over 400 on base percentage, one of the best contact hitters on the planet and in baseball right now. Wilson Contreras, they're that starting catcher, Francisco Mejia, his second full season as a DH this year. Then you got Adam Engel, but the rookie here making his debut in this episode is going to be George Magical, who you know only see potential, so probably not going to prove very much from where he is right now, but 20 years of age. I mean, these... These hitting ratings are uh, excellent for him. 53 kind of versus righties. 71 kind of versus lefties. He's got a ton of power there at 53 and 64. 71 vision. 70 discipline. I mean, those hitting stats, I, I looked at him and I'm like, yeah, he doesn't have the great potential that I'm really looking for. But, I mean, his hitting ratings are just so good. I'm going to give him a shot in the major. So he's making his major league debut. And he's going to be a rookie this year for this team. And then Gabriel Arias is a, you know, B potential 70 overall player. He pitched, I mean, he batted 276 at bats last year, and he was good as, you know, kind of a guy that was, I mean, not really a backup. I don't know if he started at all when the season developed, but he's a guy that's looking to take a bigger role on this offense this season. And then you go down to this team's farm system, and this team's farm system is pretty cleared out because of, you know, the trade that they just made. Um, they do have Jackson Merrill, though, who, you know, I mean, obviously his defense is insanely good, so that's why he's a 73 overall, but I still think his hitting is probably two, maybe, uh, probably two years away at least, so, you know, 73 overall, but he is only 19, so he's a guy that figures to be on this team in the future. And then Luis Cherubio, I mean, I don't know what his potential was at exactly with that B potential, but he's probably a few years away. And yeah, there's not a lot of other offensive players on this farm system besides uh, Max Meyer here. Or no, Max Meyer is a pitcher uh, besides the offensive guy that we just showed you. But Max Meyer, yeah, I mean, he's only 24 years old. So, like, he might, he's still probably a couple of years away, I think. So he might be, you know, he does have a potential, but he might not really make an impact on this team until he's like 26. So that's the only downside to him. But, you know, he does have a potential. He is a top prospect. And then no, nobody there in that bullpen really to look forward to. Uh, but, you know, Maddox Bruins, not sure what his potential is at. Probably not a very high beam potential. I don't, I've never really heard of him. But he is a 67 overall. So, you know, if he does well, maybe you have a chance of seeing him in the majors sooner rather than later. One of their big draft picks from last year was Pedro Palmero. You know, high beam potential at 89, I think, and as a 66 overall, 49 K per nine, 55 K per nine, 65 walk per nine, and a 51 home run per nine. So really a well-rounded pitcher so far there to start out with, and he's got a good potential. So Pedro Palmero is the primary pitching prospect that this team has to look forward to. Probably will be ready in just a couple of years' time. And he's starting at AAA, so you know we're, we're deciding to put him there. And that is a look at some of these two teams going into this season here. So, some changes for these two teams going into opening day. Not, like, insanely 
Uh, not insanely crazy changes or anything, but, you know, we do have some rookies to look forward to and to showcase here on 2023 opening day in Mile High Stadium between Las Vegas and Colorado. Well, here is, I mean, it, there is an update. I think these uniforms for the Rattlers are the exact same as they were a year ago. I think they're really, really awesome at jerseys, one of the better ones that we have in this game. And there's Lance McCullers Jr. And I was wondering whether to make him or uh, make him or Chris Neal the ace of this team. You know, 202 innings, a 1.37 a whip, and three, a 3.42 ERA. It's not like Lance McCullers Jr. was bad last year, but he just wasn't necessarily great ace material. So we're going to focus on Brian Rocchio and uh, George Magical for Colorado, as that's a stolen base attempt that is going to be thrown out. Yeah, uh, and Henry Ford as well for Las Vegas. We're going to focus on those guys mainly in this game. Uh, there's no score. Nobody's got a hit yet through the top of the second inning. I believe he got out with a walk. That base runner did. Now Brian Maracchio is now leading off the top of the third inning now. And that's a fly ball into left field. And a man go on the run. Makes that catch for the first out of the inning. Well, so the batting right after him is Harry Ford. His first... Major League at bat here against Lance McCullers. One and two count to Ford here. McCullers is going to come at him with this pitch. It's a slider. Hit well by Ford. Nobody's going to get to that ball. That one falls in to left center. And Ford with 80 speed is all the way into second base. He has got a double to start his Major League career. Congratulations to him and Ford. I mean, a ball that was absolutely crushed into the outfield there for his first hit and it's an extra base knock by the way these gamblers uniforms are brand new this year and i like i really like them here these are the road jerseys i like the changes that i made as they're a white color base now with golden sleeves and golden retro shoulders and i really like the helmet white with a golden bill gold gamblers text in the front of these jerseys as that's a ground ball and Carlos Santana is going to ground down to second so Harry Ford is now in third at third base a base hit here by Sonny Marte will drive him in he's 0 for 1 struck out in his first at bat and you also have some piping going down the front as well so I really like these Las Vegas road jerseys I like their home uniforms as well I think they're very good but yeah brand new jerseys for Las Vegas tonight as well and that's a strike two and now full count to Marte and it's a slider swung on and missed really good pitch right there my McCullers and that is going to end the top of the third inning so that's the first hit of the season for Las Vegas they don't score and they don't take advantage of it there not really sure why I mean I, I think I think uh, they, they have blue, the blue, like, guards and sleeves that you could see. And I know that last year, this team's uh, colors was the blue. Their main base color was blue. And, I mean, I feel like a lot of these other guys have white sleeves, which is what it probably should be. But you can kind of see some blue from uh, maybe last year's jerseys sprinkled into these team's uniforms this year. As we are now in the bottom of the fifth inning here. That's a fly ball. That is caught, so Rocchio can't do anything in that at bat. And George Mandel's first at bat, which is a regular fly out. So now he's Harry Ford to back up again. Still no score in this game. And there's a fly ball, and that one's caught as well. Adam Ingles sees some action out there. He might feel he's caught like three or four outs already here in this episode. So we're halfway home in this game, and we have not seen any offense yet. Corbin Burns gives up a triple, though, to Wilson Contreras. So now Francisco Mejia is at the plate. That's a ground down. Okay, one down. And an angle does get a base hit to score the first run of the game. Well, now here's George Magical. 0 for 1. Flew out his, his last at bat. He actually, I guess he's not making his major league. It seemed like they showed some stats for him uh, last year. But I don't know. I don't remember calling him up at all at any point. But uh, either way, Adam Angle is getting thrown out here at on the base pass there and not a great jump but a good throw by Henry Ford showing off his arm there behind the plate 
So now George Magic on 0 2 count. To him, line drive. Vettel falls in. That's a base hit for George Madrigal, and he does, in fact, beat that play out to first base. And maybe it isn't his first major league hit. I guess he might have been pulled up maybe by the CPU. I don't remember calling him up at any point, but maybe the CPU called him up last year, and he actually did have it in that bat last season. So that is not, I mean, not technically his maybe major league debut, not technically his first hit as a major leaguer, but... His first, I mean, this is going to be his first full season in the majors, so good swing there by Magical. Well, so now we're on to the sixth inning here in Las Vegas right now, struggling to get a lot of hits. I don't, I can't, uh, they just showed you how many hits that Las Vegas had. I don't, if any it's hit right now it might be one of only like two hits that Las Vegas has gotten against Lance McCullers all night. So three and two count to Santana, and to ground ball to second base. And that's an easy play for the first out of the inning. So one down here in the sixth. And now we move on to the bottom of the seventh. It's still one nothing. George Magical back at the plate again. One for two. Oh, it's a slider. Swing and a miss. Strike three on Magical. And, man, Corbin Burns tonight has been excellent. Yeah, Las Vegas has only one hit. So, Harry Ford's double is right now standing as the only knock against Lance McCullers right now. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Here is Lance McCullers again and he's got 95 pitches. This has been an excellent game for him. That's a pop-up by Brian Rockiel right to the pitcher for out number two here in the eighth inning. Yeah, man, Las Vegas talked about their offense might be, you know, a little bit of a weaker spot for them. Well, right now they have not done anything on offense for, uh, into this point. Here's Harry Ford, the only guy with a hit in this game, and he's going to fly it out in a shallow right field, and that's caught by the right fielder to the end, the top of the eighth inning. So, in the middle of the eighth, and, oh my god, I'm still only up one nothing, but, that's well, probably stream or eight shut on innings. So, it was seven really brilliant innings right there by, uh, by Corbin. Burns in this game, Phil Maton comes out of the bullpen, 45.1 innings in a 2.98 ERA last year. Very good numbers for him. And that's a, yeah, but my house is trying to lay down a bunt here, and he fails to do that on strike one. So now the count's going to move over to 0-2, should have pulled that bat back, because that was not a strike. And now he's swinging away, and he's going to swing and miss at a slur for strike three. Phil Maton, good job there to get the strikeout. So now Josh Rojas, Rojas out the plate. That's a fly ball on his on the move and caught right in front of the wall. Framo Reyes there making that play. That was a good play out there in the outfield for out now number two here in this right eighth inning. The top of the order right now is batting, and here's Mookie Betts. Yeah, only batted 241 last year. Had a 756 OPS. It wasn't a terrible season for him, but it wasn't an amazing season either. There's a fly ball, and Framo Reyes here, and that one, he's not going to get to this ball, it's over the wall, and gone! Mookie Betts with a home run to right field, and Colorado doubles their lead here in the bottom of the eighth, and it's two to nothing. Big swing by Mookie Betts, only 336 feet on the distance there. As it just gets over the wall and right, with Colorado now up to nothing, and with how Las Vegas' offense is playing in this game, almost seems like an insurmountable lead. Is that is strike three? Wow, I mean the Rattlers have seven hits tonight, so they've been able to get on base. But man, end of the eighth inning, and it's a two nothing advantage. So well, here we are in the top of the ninth, and Lance McCullers Jr. with 98 pitches is going to start the ninth inning, or he's not going to actually, never mind. And yeah, in a two-run game, with him basically at 100 pitches right now, we're going to want to go to the bullpen and uh, bring out somebody else here. As it's a, they give him a standing ovation, what an unbelievable start for him in this game. Here's Jordan Rano, 49 out of 55 saves, a 2.52 ERA in 60 innings. Last year, so yeah, you feel very confident bringing him out in this situation. That's a swing and a miss. Strike three to 
Carlos Santana, and he is just destroyed. He did not have a good debut for Las Vegas right now. But yeah, I'm definitely wanting to, you know, bring out Jordan Romano in this situation. Here's now Sterling Marte as the lineup flips over. That's a ground ball, the magical. He is going to get this one. Touch the bag. Out number two in this ball game now. And Las Vegas down to the final out on opening day here. And they don't want to get shut out. So here's Tommy Edmond. Yeah, Tommy Edmond has blue batting gloves and blue uh, arm guards and sleeves and stuff. So I don't know where that comes from. But that's a fly ball. Adam Angle is right underneath and he makes the catch. That's the final out and that ends the game. Las Vegas is shut out. And it's Colorado. What a pitching day for them here in this one. And they win this game 2 to nothing here on opening day. So, wow, the Gamblers, one hit all night, and that one hit belonged to rookie Gary Ford as the offense was completely shut down in this game. That's the swing by Harry Ford right there. And led to an extra base knock. Corbett Burns was also excellent. I mean, he pitched seven one-run innings in this game, but it just... And, you know, not, he couldn't have, you know, he just could not have been much better and still won the game based on how Lindsey Collins Jr. pitched tonight. And then Jordan Romano got a couple of strikeouts. I mean, not a couple of strikeouts, but got a strikeout and got his first save of the year. So the Rathers win this bowl game 2 to nothing. And, yeah, Harry Ford, the only Las Vegas notable guy really in this game at all. As Lance McCullough is definitely the player of the game in this one. And yeah, very lonely box score right here. Again, that double by Harry Ford, the only hit tonight for Las Vegas in this one. And seven strikeouts for their offense as well in this game. Corbin Burns, seven brilliant innings, seven innings, five hits, only one run allowed, one walk at six strikeouts, a 1.29 ERA. Excellent debut for him on the season. And Phil Maton did give up a run, gave up two hits in the eighth inning uh, in his debut. He had eight, so eight strikeouts total for Las Vegas in this game. Colorado, you know, the hits were pretty evenly spread out. And you had a one by Rojas and a home run, of course, by Mookie Betts in this one. Uh, Brian Reynolds had two hits in this game. Contreras had a hit as well. And Eagle had a hit. George Magical had a hit as well. In this one, Luis Arias did not. He had over. He was over three with three strikeouts. But Mookie Betts, and that home run. Adam Engel was the other guy with an RBI in this one. Brian Reynolds had a double. Carlos Correa had a triple. And then Lance McCullers Jr. Eight innings, one hit, two walks, six strikeouts only. Three base runners total for him all night. And then Jordan Romano with the save and a strikeout. So that was a low-scoring affair. Now we move on to the final regular season game, or the final opening day game here for you that we have in year two. And it's going to be between Chicago and Minneapolis. And here's Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole last year was excellent. 231 strikeouts, a 3.05 ERA. One of the best pitchers in the league. And, you know, highlighting a Blue Sox team that's probably not going to be very good this season. And, you know, if Garrett Cole's, yeah, Garrett Cole has a really long and big contract, so that might prevent Columbia, uh, Chicago from trading him. But I, I might look to maybe do that. I mean, we'll have to see what happens this year with him. But Jordan Montgomery, they got him from Boston, and he wasn't very good with Boston last year at all. They also got Matthew Boyd. Well, Matthew Boyd is definitely a guy that I, it's, it's going to be on the trade radar for me, and unless he does really poorly this season, I'm going to have to deal him in the in this season for Chicago. We got Asa Lacy, as I mean, he's making his major league debut here this season. He's going to be making his first major league start. He's a 69 overall pitcher with big potential, 23 years old. Got good keeping on there at 71. Everything else is really well routed at 50, basically. A couple of stats below 50, one they hit behind at 55. But here's the bullpen, and, you know, Austin Pruitt, I mean, 2.12 ERA and a 1.11 whip. I mean, if he's got those kind of numbers again this year, watch for him to get traded. I think basically every relief pitcher that's on this staff right now that does well is a trade candidate right now for me. And you got Kyle Crick there. 
as a mid relief. Alex Young did not pitch at all last year, actually, and has not had very good career numbers. But we'll see what he does this year for them. And then Joe Jimenez only pitched 14 innings last year, so you know, he didn't really make it a big a big impact. Uh, Camilo Duvall is probably their best young relief pitcher that they got on this team. He's 25 years old, so he is legitimately very young. He was good last year in, you know, 75 innings. So he's a definitely an interesting guy. John Verabia, I mean, a say, I mean, a 2.02 ERA last year. I look to have him. He's a definitely a trade candidate for me going into this year for Chicago. And then Devin Williams, half him for four more years. I think they re-signed him in the offseason, and he's a pretty decent relief, or a decent closer there for them, and he's going to be their closer again this year. Well, so this lineup is pretty different from the one that they had a year ago, actually. You know, Alex Verdugo and Omar Narvaez are still here, but Omar Narvaez, they just signed him to a pretty big contract. They signed him to a four-year deal. And, you know, he's a guy that I'm not going to not going to trade him this season, not going to trade him in the offseason either, but I do think in a couple of years, he is a guy that they could see trade traded here. I don't know if they have any catcher prospects on this team. We'll see. But uh, their big signing in the offseason was Jesus Aguilar, who, you know, a guy that really good offensive numbers. I mean, those offensive stats are all excellent for him. And you know, the last couple of years, he has been a legitimately good offensive hitter for, uh, I mean, you know, obviously in real life for the Orioles, but then in 2022 for Ohio last year, he had 80, 19 home runs, 85 RBIs, and a 740 OPS. So, Jesus Aguilar is a guy that, you know, has a lot of good offensive value. And I know they signed him. They signed him to a four-year contract. I kind of wish in retrospect that I signed him to a shorter contract because I might not want to trade him this year because of that. But, you know, if he has a good season this season, in the offseason, I am definitely down to maybe get some value for him depending on how the season goes, because Chicago should not have a good year this year. They should be pretty bad. But, you know, that opens the door for some guys with some trade value to be traded this year. Brandon Crawford, I mean, he's not going to have a lot of trade value, so he's going to just be leaving in free agency after this year is over. They got Jose Iglesias in free agency from Richmond, and he wasn't very good with the Rhinos a year ago. Had 50 RBIs, but had a below 700 OPS and a below 300 on base percentage. And, you know, they have him for two years. So, you know, he's a guy that, you know, if he does well, I can see trading him as well. But uh, we just have to see there. And then they got Kevin Kiermaier as well from Boston. And, you know, the offense for him last year wasn't really that terrible, honestly. I mean, over 700 OPS to 718 and a 326 on base. That's not terrible. So three years and $9 million for him. So they signed him to wear that kind of a contract. And not a lot of money on the books for any of these players, really. Corey Dickerson, starting for this team. He was starting a little bit last year, but he was very bad last season. And then he got uh, Jonathan Villar and then Sam Hilliard. So, yeah, this offense is not very good. This lineup is not very good, as you can see. And there's a lot of new faces on it, including Aguilar, Kevin Kiermaier, and Jose Iglesias. The bench, Ben Boom and, and Hal Angel Lopez, I mean, the bench isn't great either. And the farm system, you know, the farm system is pretty decent there. You got uh, New Kenzie and Noel, and then Adrian Del Castillo is a decent catching prospect there as at a B potential 72 overall. But the biggest guy that they have as a prospect on this team right now is Jason Dominguez, who they got in the, in the, in the uh, Ramirez trade, Jose Ramirez trade that they made in the offseason. And, you know, he's a 74 overall, only 20 years old, has really high A potential. I mean, his hitting stats are great. 51 and 61 contact, 45, 44 power, 41 and 43 on the vision and the discipline. Really good defense already. Also, I mean, 81 fielding. And his defense is really good. So, yeah, obviously. And then Nelson Vasquez, you know, I don't know what his potential is, but He's already a 70 overall. He's got some B potential as well. But Jason Amiga is definitely their biggest future guy to look forward to on this team and might make an appearance on this squad this season. I mean, I think that's very possible. So you go down to double A, and double A is kind of loaded right now. They got guys like Travis Swaggerty, who's, you know, a little bit of an older prospect, but 
Carlos Morales, a recent draft pick from a year ago, 21 years old, 56 overall, but has really good hitting ratings already at 59 and 55 contact. Glenn Rucker, you know, 28 years old, but I mean, great power for him right now already, so I don't know if he's really going to be realistic to have a shot in the majors. But then Homer Santos, this was their highest draft pick a year ago. He is a first rounder. I'm not sure what a pick he was exactly, but he is great. I mean, 65 overall. 63 and 69 contact, 73 vision, 55 vision, or discipline, it means 77 clutch. So his fielding is pretty terrible right now, and his power is also pretty terrible, but, he, man, he has some really awesome hitting ratings and a, definitely a really top prospect for this team. So Chicago does have a couple of really good young hitters down there at AA. On the pitching side of things, they don't have as many guys to look forward to here. Uh, they do have Luis Pulse, who he is right now. I mean, he's in double A, so he was also a draft pick from a year ago, and he's got A potential. He's a really good young elite pitching prospect here. 50, uh, hit per nine, 62, K per nine. I mean, those are really good, well-rounded stats, and he's still super young. So now we go over to the Minneapolis Millers, and this team really didn't change very much from a year ago. Honestly, uh, as you still have Gosman as their ace, Herman Marquez as their number two starter, Hyun Kim, number three, Steven Matz, number four, and he got pitched last year for this team. And then Kohei Arihara was more of a bullpen guy, only pitched 21.2 innings last year, so he's that number five starter right now listed there, and we'll see what he does this season. There is that number five pitcher. The uh, bullpen here, Jose Suarez. Was good last year, 143 innings. He didn't actually start any games, but he pitched a ton out of the bullpen for them. Pretty good. Jaime Barrio, you know, didn't pitch at all last year. Last time we saw him in the majors, it wasn't great for him. Uh, Jake, Jake Brents was okay. Brent Martin was pretty good last year, only 25 innings. Uh, Chris Martin, 2.47 or 3.47 a year and 57 innings a year ago. Eric Lauer was not very good. Liam Hendricks also was not very good. He had actually had a 4.32 ERA last season. And then Brett Trinan, they re-signed him uh, in the offseason to a three-year, $9 million contract. And Brett Trinan last year was unbelievable. I mean, 28 holds. He's now this team's closer this season. He had a below two ERA, so really good numbers there. I mean, they're ranked 11th, and, you know, this team was basically 500 a year ago. And I do think that the team could figure into the playoff chase. I mean, I think they have a good enough pitching staff and bullpen to do it. And their offense is pretty decent as well. They got Michael A. Taylor and Luis Arias there. Of course, Renato Tatis. And then A.J. Pollock actually led this team in RBIs last year with 95 of them. This is his last year here. He's going to be going into free agency next season. So that's a pretty big, important guy there. And then you got Gavin Sheets. And Jonathan Eddy, a couple of younger players, and Eugenio Suarez, Chris Bryant, as well, and Joey Bart. So, really not any differences to this team's offense. Joey Bart wasn't actually a full-time starter last year for this team, but uh, he is going to be the full-time starter now. So, yeah, no really big changes to this offense at all. Uh, they do have Julio Ramos, who I think is, was a Rule 5 draft pick, actually. And Julio Ramos, in real life, has turned into a very solid player. He just played in the All-Star game in real life, so he's got good hitting ratings in this game. I mean, 60 and 65 power versus, le you know, lefties. 68 discipline. I really like where his contact is at, so Billy Ramos has a chance to be one of the young, a young up-and-comer uh, on offense for this team starting in this year on the bench. And then we're going to go door 79 overall. I mean, he just was so, he just was pretty bad. Uh, as a starter last year for this team, but he's got some good ratings there, and he is a 79 overall, so he can hop into the lineup at really moment's notice. And in the farm system, this team doesn't have a lot, really any top prospects at all, but Felix Pena is decent. Uh, Drew Mendoza, you know, already 25 years old, so not really a great prospect there, and doesn't have super high view potential, I don't think. But... You know, Jake McCarthy, 25 years old, big potential. Connor Norby, big potential, and 70 overall. So, you know, not a lot of, I mean, I don't, have, I don't think they have any eight potential offensive players on this team. 
But they do have some kind of decent V potential guys on this team, but that's about it. So, yeah, not a lot of uh, prospects to really show off here at all. Now, they do have some pitching prospects that we would like to show you. Sixo Sanchez is just a young pitcher for them, and he was really bad last year. So, I wanted to start in AAA. And, you know, he's definitely a guy that should get major league action, should call him up at some point this year. But not until he shows me that he can actually perform well in the majors. I mean, he had a 6.21 ERA last year, so it, he was just bad. Really bad. So, he's got good ratings all across the board, but we'll see what he does in the farm system. Well, then you got Corbin Martin as well there at 72 overall. And uh, Matt Voss, or Derek Dillon, 19 years old, you know, beat potential, but 63 overall does have some pretty good ratings there, actually. And he was a draft pick from last year for them. And then Matt Foster, 28 years old. So, not a lot there to speak of. But Pedro Valsmail, you know, mid-B potential. Not sure where it's at exactly, but at 71 overall. Might have some uh, potential here. He has a good, he's got good ratings for being a double A. So, he should be he should be pretty good down here. And he's got good 75. Cape and I is really good already. Frank Mazzucato, only 19 years old. Has good ratings there. Uh, Felix Valdez, I mean, doesn't have, can't strike anybody out, but uh, he has EP potential as well. And then uh, Mark Schnell is their only eight potential prospect on this entire roster. So, yeah, only one eight potential guy. I mean, Mark, granted, Mark Schnell is really excellent. Was a draft pick for them last year. 71 K per nine, 60 walk per nine, 56 you know, home run per nine. I mean, really good and well rounded per nine stats from Mark Schnell. So he's a guy that. That this team will look forward to in the bullpen for sure. But I don't know. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, not a lot of changes for the Millers this season. So I'm not sure what to expect for their team this year. I think they have a lot of potential to make a, you know, a push for that full season spot and get into a wild card spot this year. But, I mean, we're going to have to see some improvements from some of their players and some of their offense and their hitters this year. And I think they might be looking to, you know, I don't know what they're going to want to do with the trade deadline, but, you know, they don't have a lot of prospects to deal out at the trade deadline, but I think that they could, I could see them trying to make some improvements at the deadline for, you know, really getting into that playoff spot right now. Because I think they, you know, they're in an interesting position, that's for sure, I think, right now. Where they're, you know, a decent team, but they might not be really good enough to make a postseason push, they're just going to have to play it out. Well, so here, you already saw the numbers for uh, Garrett Cole there, but he's going to start at the top of the first off here. Michael A. Taylor is starting for the Millers here, and that's a swing and a miss for strike three. Millers jerseys have not changed at all. Chicago's, they have not changed very much either, except that they now have Chicago script on the front of them. But that is a bowl that misses inside and nearly hits Fernando Tatis Jr. here. One down in the inning. Three and two pitch to, or no, and Elisa Arias is batting right now. That's a ground ball. That one gets on through and past Aguilar there at first base and into right. But now, now here's Fernando Tatis at the plate. One of the best young hitters in baseball, of course. And, you know, a guy batted 291. Had a 948 OPS last year, 34 homers, and 92 RBIs. Had an excellent season a year ago for sure. Now a 2-2 two two to him. Ground ball, and it's stopped at the third by the third baseman. And not a double play. They don't get Tatis at first just fast enough to beat that play out. So now two down here in this first inning for A.J. Pollock. And again, a 787 OPS, 25 home runs, and 95 but he's had a good season a year ago for sure. Also, here's a 3-1, and one, and that ball misses inside for ball four. So, uh, base runners right now for here a little bit of a struggle in this first inning. Now there's two outs in this inning. He's got to get Evan Sheets here. And that's a pop-up right behind the mound, right behind the plate. And that ball is caught and taken care of by the catcher. So that was... a. Uh, that's an unfortunate swing right there as, you know, a hit and a walk. Some base runners in the first for Minneapolis, but they don't score as we introduce 
this team's as the uh, Chicago Blue Sox will start batting for the first time this season. The Kevin Gosman last year had you know 179 hits allowed, 212 strikeouts, 222 innings pitched, and 2.79 ERA. He had a really good season a year ago for the Millers. And who now is Alex Verdugo leading things off for Chicago as that ball misses inside and immediately a four-pitch walk given up by Kevin Gosman to start the season. There's one out in the inning, and now here is Jesus Aguilar, his first at bat here in Chicago. And let's see, oh, that's a swing and a miss. Had a four-seamer that was way, way inside. Definitely not a pitch to swing out there by Aguilar, but one and two now. Hey, that's a swing and a miss. Curveball and down below the knees. Four strike three. Brilliant pitch right there to and from Kevin Gosman. So now it's Brandon Crawford, his last year, presumably at Chicago here, as that four-seamer is called strike one at the bottom of the zone. And yeah, only about a 233 last year with a below 700 OPS, so I don't see any reason for Chicago to re-sign him again. And as that's a ground ball, and it's stopped by Guerrero, or by Tatis there at short, that's the out, and the end of the first inning. So both teams with the base runner in the first, but no runs. Well, here's Jose Iglesias, 2 to the 8. Average a year ago, was first at bat here in Chicago. And that one is misses, misses as well. And wow, okay. Kevin Gosman walked to begin the game. And now he walks on five pitches to start the bottom of the second. Kevin Kiermaier, his first at bat here in Chicago is a strike called looking on the outside corner. Really good pitch right there by Kevin Gosman. So one down in the inning, and oh, with trying to go back to first and being thrown out is um, Iglesias there at first base. Great pickoff move by Kevin Gosman. I don't really, I don't know if we saw that at all last year. A pickoff move being successful. That's really big there. As now here's Corey Dickerson, 138 home runs. In his career, and you know, was not very good as a starter a year ago. So, we'll see what he can do here. 0 and 2 pitch to him now with two out and nobody on. It's a splitter swung on and missed. Strike three, out number three in the inning. And Gavin Gosman with a few strikeouts already to begin his night. Two down in the inning here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, that's a ground ball. Nice stop by Aegis Aguilar across the diamond. Or no, not Aegis Aguilar is not playing third base. What am I saying? As that's going to end the top of the third inning. And the Millers do already have four hits, but no runs so far. And this game going by quickly here. No score as we're in the bottom of the fourth inning. He was Aegis Aguilar. Ground ball. And a nice stop by Tatis. And, I mean, no speed whatsoever by Jesus Aguilar, and he cannot beat that play out. That play would have been a biggest hit for, I mean, a ton of other players in this league, but not for him. So with two outs in this fourth inning, here's Crawford at the dish for a second at bat. 0 for 1 tonight. 2-1 and one pitch. Crawford swings and crushes it. A split in a deep right field. That ball is long gone. Home run for Brandon Crawford. In his second at bat of the year, and Chicago will strike first here on opening day. One and nothing in the fourth. Wow, what a big swing by Brandon Crawford. No doubt, home run. I think he had 12 of them a year ago. 409 feet, halfway up there in the outfield seats in right. I love it. This is a really good stadium, by the way, here in Chicago. I really like this team stadium but man that was a huge swing and a huge home run right there uh, that's a ground ball stops at second base and order first for the out so there is uh, the end of the fourth inning but Brandon Crawford gets the Blue Sox on the board in the hit and the run column with a solo shot against Kevin Gosman here in the fourth Chicago's up one nothing also now here's Chris Bryant 2-1 pitch to him here in this fifth inning, and that's a fly ball on the move, and oh, it's off of the very top of the wall, off of the glove of the outfielder, I believe, 
And that is going to be a double to lead off this inning by Chris Bryant. Kind of an awkward play out there in right field. And I mean, Kevin Kiermaier is obviously this team's center fielder. I don't know who the right fielder is on this team. But yeah, that was very interesting because it, wow, it bounced off of the very, very top of the wall. I mean, first off, the outfielder almost caught it on the fly. And then it bounced off the back of his glove. Wow, that was a very interesting play right there. Uh, Sam Hilliard is right now this team's right fielder there. So that was a weird play, but now there's a man in swing position, and that's a walk of Joey Barr to put another man on. Also, now here's Michael A. Taylor, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts on his resume in this game so far. Kind of struggling in this one, but he's going to lay down a bunt here. And it's over to first base. It's going to be a good one. They go to second. And they do actually get the out at second base. A good kind of heads up play there to get the, not the lead runner, but get a force out at second there. So now man on the corners with one out for Luis or Orias. Or here, Luis Arias. And that's a fly ball into center. Kevin Kiermaier is under. He makes the play. Tagging from third base. Going home and scoring is Chris Bryant. He is safe. And Minneapolis ties the game. Sacrifice fly. And we are all knotted up at one one apiece. That was a good throw by Kevin Kiermaier, but just not enough and not in time to get the out. So now here's Tatis, one for two in the game so far. As that's a four-seamer that is on the corner for strike two. Brilliant pitch right there by Garrett Cole. No one to pitch to him. Here's a ground ball. It kicks away from Narvaez and up to second base. Go is Michael A. Taylor here now. He's in scoring position. So the count is sitting at one and two. Fernando Tati, the base hit, could give the lead to Minneapolis. And it's a fly ball into right field, but it looks like Hilliard is under it, makes the play. That's the end of the top of the fifth inning. And that is the out. So we're halfway home in this one. Minneapolis does get on the scoreboard, though, with the sack fly, and we are all not at one. So good at close and tight game so far, as here's Kevin Kiermaier flying it into shallow center. That one falls in just barely for a base hit right in front of Michael A. Taylor. So a single here for Chicago, and you see those Chicago text and logo in the front. I think that makes these Chicago jerseys just a little bit better. They look really good right now, in my opinion. And here's Corey Dickerson again, and he's got over a thousand hits in 13 major league seasons. Two and one, and uh, that's a fly ball deep into right field. Still going back is the right fielder at the wall. He runs out of room. That ball is gone. Corey Dickerson, a two run homer, and Chicago's got the lead here in the fifth inning. It is three to one. Man, big swing by Corey Dickerson. Second homer of the game for Chicago. That one made it to the seats out there in right field. Man, 85% chance to win the game now for Chicago here. They're up 3-1 to one now as Jonathan VR is going to ground it over two tap tees at short. That's out number one here in this inning. But, you know, Kevin Gosman started off this game really, really well. And he's kind of run into some trouble here recently. That's a double by Ono Omar Narvaez. And it's now four to one as here comes Jesus Aguilar up to the plate for his third at bat of the game. Yeah, Gosman pitched brilliantly in the first few innings, only allowing that home run to Crawford. That's a line drive. That one falls in for a base hit and no speed there at second base. It's not gonna be an RBI, but Aguilar gets his first hit here. As a Chicago Blue Sox there, as that was a liner that just fell right in front of the right fielder. So two on. They're still not done with this fifth inning here. Gosman trying to get Brandon Crawford to end this frame. And that's a ground ball. Nice stop at second base. Jonathan Indy there making the play to finally end a pretty brutal uh, fifth inning there. I don't know why it showed Garrett Cole. That was obviously not who hit the home run. Corey Dickerson, though, 4-1. to one. Now pitching. The Jaime Chicago Blue Sox are ahead Arena. now in this game. And here comes Jaime Berea. Haven't seen him. Didn't see him at all last year. So this will be his first uh, action in the majors for a couple of years. 
And he's got the first couple outs here down already in the sixth inning. And that's a pop-up over into foul grounds. And the third baseman there making that play. So that's the end of the sixth inning. And, you know, Suarez catches that one. And man, Minneapolis, only nine outs left to go here. And they only have one run. Well, here is Suarez, who just made that last Maybe out of the Minneapolis. sixth inning. And he's going to start at the top of the seventh. We get cool still on the mound in this game. Has been really good so far today. And that's a slider swung on a miss at 90 miles an hour. Eric Cole, not with his usual massive strikeout numbers today. That's only his fourth of this game so far. But that was a brutal pitch right there to score as a slider with seven inch break starting in the middle of the zone and all the way down there in the dirt. That was a brilliant pitch. Well, so now full count to Chris Bryant. And Chris Bryant's going to swing and miss at a slider inside. Man, fifth one for Cole. And 105th pitch of the game to Joey Bard is a pop-up and shallow into the outfield there. Caught by Crawford at second base. So, man, seven really good. One run, six at innings tonight by Garrett Cole. I'm assuming that that's going to be the last inning. We'll see him pitch in this game with over 100 pitches. Javi Barilla is still pitching here for the Millers, and he gets a strikeout right there. I think that was Sam Hilliard right there that just swung on and missed. So now two down in the inning. Omar Narvaez is going to slash this one into right field. That one's down and off of the wall as around third comes the runner, and there's not going to be a throw to the plates. Omar Narvaez with a... Double into the gap, and Chicago extending the lead here in the seventh. As that one hit very well, and into the gap. Now it's 5-1 Chicago. Here's Aguilar up again, and that's a ground ball over to second base. Hayes is Aguilar 1-4 for four day so far. As we're now in the eighth inning, and they're going to bring out Camilo Duvall. Technically not a save situation here, or at least they're not going to bring out their their guy, their setup man here, but Duvall last year, 3.75 ERA and a 1.29 whip in 72 innings was pretty good for Chicago here, as up is now Michael E. Taylor as a 2-1 and one at 2 here from Duvall and that's a ball well, I mean that was a fastball right down the middle and nothing to do with that pitch for Michael E. Taylor, that was a pitch to crush so now two strikes on him here. The two and two. It's a slider. Swung on and missed. I mean, right near the belt, but, you know, a little bit inside. So maybe not an amazing location by Duvall, but not a great at bat there by Michael Taylor. So that's one down here in the eighth and only five left to go. I see how late on that off-speed pitch there, it seems to him. As Luis Arias is up and he's in the only... Guy was guy responsible for the only run for the uh, Millers today, and that's a ground ball. That one's stopped nicely by VR, but uh, there's not going to be a play. Actually, that might be um, that might be. Oh no, that's not. Gonna be, I don't know who that is at third base, but either way, that's a base hit. There's another one. That's a line drive into right field as the throw goes back into the infield. John, that is Jonathan Viali there at third base. But uh, now so there's two on here and only one man out. Well, here's A.J. Pollock. And A.J. Pollock is going to swing, fly this one deep into left field. At the wall is the left fielder, and that ball is gone. A.J. Pollock, a huge three-run homer. And Minneapolis is right back in this bowl game. They're only down one. Here in the eighth. Wow. Four to five. Now the score. What a big swing by A.J. Pollock. 362 feet on the distance there off of the uh, the patio top there in the outfield. And now they're going to bring on Alex Young. Not really sure why because he's not their setup guy. Didn't pitch again. Didn't pitch at all last year. So... You know, he hasn't, hasn't been in the majors for a bit. I, I don't really know why. I don't know why you'd either. Also, you could go to your closer right now, too. But 
Anyway, that's a ball that is dropped in there for a single into right field. And trying to go to second base and actually getting there because of the throw being offline is... Uh, that was Jonathan India there. Kind of a risky play to go to second base, but it worked out. That's a tying run. In scoring position is that 12-seamer is swung on and missed by Suarez, who is one for three on the day so far. And with two strikes on him here, it's a cutter! Swing and a miss! Huge strikeouts right there from Young, and he escapes the eighth inning with the lead still intact for Chicago. Man, that was a big pitch right there. Now Brandon Crawford's up again, one for three with that home run in the fourth inning, but man, four to five. Now the score, that's a slider swung on and missed. And I'm Maria, I mean, he didn't give up the run in the last inning, but overall he's been pitching pretty well, and that's another strikeout for him. As way early on that pitch was Crawford there. Off-speed pitch inside and low. And now it's Kevin Kiermaier, one for three. So far today in his Chicago debut tonight in a three and two pitch to Kiermaier is inside four ball four. So, you know, get, get on base. That's what Chicago wants Kevin Kiermaier to do this year for them. And he's gotten on base twice now. Here's Corey Dickerson. Had a huge home run early. That's the difference in this game right now. Actually, the difference in this game is that double that Omer Novias hit in the seventh inning. And that's a fly out to Michael A. Taylor there in center. So we go to the ninth inning here. And 8-9-1 and one for the Millers. Trailing by only one as out comes Devin Williams. 42 of 47 in save opportunities a year ago in 40 innings. A 2.7 ERA and a 1.27 whip with 46 strikeouts. So, yeah, definitely one of the better closing pitchers around in the game. And he's already got one out in this ninth inning. Up now is Joey Bart. 2 and 1 to Bart here. That's a line drive. That's going to be a base hit back up the middle. Kiermaier getting the ball back in, but that's the tying run. Getting on base here for the Millers to uh, with one out in this inning. And Joey Bart, you know, I don't think he was the full-time starter at the catching position for this team last year. So they want him to have a bigger role on this team and for him to hopefully step up. He's definitely a younger guy for the Millers. There's now Michael A. Taylor, and now he's going to line this one in his center field as well. Stopped at center by Kiermaier, and going from first to third is uh, the runner there, and actually going from going up to second base there was Taylor, and now they're going to just intentionally walk Luis Arias here to go to the bases, put a force anywhere. I think that's probably smart, but a big spot here because you got the part of this order coming up now with the bases loaded and one out, and here's Fernando Tatis. Already a two for four game for him so far. Three and one. That's a four steamer swung on and missed there. Could not afford to miss in location there with that pitch. Now count is full. Biggest pitch of the game right here to Fernando. It's a ground ball. Stopped at second. Brandon Crawford starts it. And a double play. Oh, a close play at first. They get Tatis and the game is over. Wow, Chicago just barely holds on here in this one in their season opener and wins it 4-5. to five. Man, the Millers almost made that comeback happen. They got within one run late, and that was the best play opening and closest opening day game that we, was, that we saw here in these few opening day episodes that we've shown you, but man, that was a fun one right there. And yeah, we're going to continue with some debuts for some of these new pitchers um, like Chris Sale for Colorado, and Jameson Tyon will be in the next video. He's debuting with St. Louis. And then we have some rookies also that are going to make their debuts, including Asa Lacey for, the, for Chicago and Gunnar Hoagland for San Francisco. But let's look at how close this play at first base was. I thought he might be safe, uh, you know, when live, when, when playing this game in real time, I thought he was safe here. But look at how close this is. Wow. 
I mean, that is insanely close. That is, I mean, just mere inches away from beating that throw out was Fernando Tatis. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's clear he does not, that throw does, in fact, beat him to first base, but a ridiculously close play to end the game. Wow, and if he was safe there, we would have had a tie game. So that was huge. And you look at Minneapolis, and every single person on this lineup had at least one hit. That's actually kind of impressive. 12 overall for the Millers in this one. Orios had two of them, as had two hits and an RBI. Fernando Tatis also had two hits. Uh, AJ Pollock had a monster three-run homer in the eighth inning. But no other RBIs than that. Double by India and Bryant in this one. As well, Paul Kenarai is getting those ribbies. Kevin Gosman, five innings, five runs, four, or five hits, four runs allowed, three walks, and seven strikeouts. Not an amazing game. Jaime Barrio gave up one run in three innings of relief. And then you go to Chicago, and, you know, less spread out offensive production of a day for them, but still, you got no Vias. I mean, they got the win. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. You got no Omar or Vias with a monster double. That ended up being the run that separated. Chicago in this one, a double in the seventh inning. And actually, that was he had two of them on the day. And Corey Diggerson, Brandon Crawford had big home runs as well in this one. And Garrett Cole, what a debut for him this season. Seven innings, six hits, only one run allowed, two walks and five strikeouts. Really good stuff from him. Duvall did give up three runs, though, and .1 innings. And Young got .2 innings, huge strikeout. And uh, Devin Williams got his first save of the year despite giving up two hits and a walk in that ninth inning. So that'll do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. As uh, I do want to quickly announce here that we will be starting NCAA 25 franchises very soon. Uh, I've been pretty busy recently, and uh, this weekend I'm at home at Holland Ranch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a video out uh, uh, you know, introducing, I have the teams, I know what teams I'm going to be playing in the new game already, but you're probably going to have to wait until, I mean, I really want to get out, get this video out and get that series started on Monday. So hopefully I can get the, at least the introduction of the teams on Monday for you guys. Uh, I'm going to do a regular dynasty series and I'm also going to do a coaching carousel dynasty. So I'm going to make you know, a custom coach that's going to look like me. And uh, we're going to start as an offensive coordinator at a lower tier school and kind of build our, build ourselves up and build up our coaching uh, repertoire there in that coaching carousel dynasty. So those are what I'm going to be doing on the channel for NCAA 25. And I really want to get that started for you guys because, of course, the game came out uh, to everybody on Friday. But I'm really excited for that. I'm really looking forward to having that game on the channel, and I think it's going to be great. So, yes, that is going to happen if anybody was wondering. But we'll continue to go on with this uh, with this series. Uh, the uploads will probably be more, a little bit more sporadic because my main focus on this channel is probably going to shift to NCAA 25, at least for the, for the moment. Um, although it is still baseball season right now, so we might, we'll, we'll probably stick to at least one of these episodes per week. I'm going to probably, I mean, I'm going to talk about this when I come out with uh, the with the NCAA 25 intro video about how kind of the schedule is going to look because my schedule is probably going to change a little bit. I know right now it's been not super consistent, but it will get probably more consistent when school starts for me, uh, and that's going to happen in a couple of weeks. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this one here. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. If you like this content or if you're really super excited about NCAA 25 coming to the channel, because I really am. So subscribe for that kind of content coming very soon. And uh, I will talk to you guys in a couple of days from now when, this, when I'm recording this. See you next time, everybody. You've been listening to Lucas from Mars. Have, hope you're having a great weekend, and God bless.